you got your Bibles this morning, let's turn over to the book of John. Let's turn over to the book of John. Maybe the right message for the right day, Brother Gary. We're going to go to chapter 20. And what I want to talk to you today about is, is Joey's goals. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Did you ever have some goals in your Christian walk? I have some goals in my Christian walk. I, I do. And I, I do, Sammy. I don't know if I'm wrong in having goals, but I do have some goals. But I want to tell you those, what those goals are today, and we're going to kind of get into them for just a minute. I have three goals. One, I want to get people to Jesus Christ. That is my number one goal. I really do. I do, Sam. Me and, me and Sammy talk about this. I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people in this church, and I'm going to tell you something. The underlying fact of everything that we do in this church, and I, I want you to hear what I'm about to say. The underlying fact of everything that we do in this church is to get somebody to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it's about. No matter what we do, is to get somebody to Jesus Christ. Number two, I want to grow those people that we get to Christ. I want to grow them in Christ. That's my second goal. But number three is the one that has become challenging for me in, in my walk, Steve. It has. It's, it's the one that challenges me the most. And, and sometimes it is a burden that I carry. My third goal is, is a hard goal. And uh, from the ministry standpoint... But I want to get Christians committed to Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about a commitment. And, and, I, and I say that is, as I see Brother Gary and, and, and Sister Brenda kind of step to a side, I think to myself that there have to be others to fill that responsibility. You understand what I'm saying? That fill that responsibility. So if you got your Bible, let's go over to the book of John in chapter 20. I'll read a couple of verses, chapter 20 and chapter 20, 28 and 29. I want to finish off something that we brought up on Easter Sunday morning. I want to dwell on this for just a moment, and then we're going to talk about a couple of things and just go where God leads us. And the Bible says, and the Bible says in, in verse 28, and Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have yet believed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father to God, Lord, we are so grateful. We are so thankful for all the things that you've done for us. Lord, I just pray this morning to God, Lord, I just pray that, that whatever would come out of my mouth, dear God, Lord, it be led of the Holy Spirit, dear Jesus, dear God, Lord. I pray this morning to God, Lord, and the things that we do and the things that this church would represent in this community to God, Lord, that it would lift up your holy name. Lord, I just thank you for all the many things that you do for us. Just, Lord, I just ask that you lead us, guide us, and direct us. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. And Thomas answered and said, my Lord, my God. You know, I said, first of all, I want to, I want to do what it takes to get people to Jesus Christ. And surely what I, what I mean by that, what I mean by that is, <laughs> I want to do whatever it takes to get people to Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. That is, that is something that, is, it is, that has been for me, in a, in a, and I'm not just choosing a quest that when God had put that burden on my heart, and I think it's not just the, the, the burden that's on my heart, but it's on so many hearts that are in this room, is that I don't care if I'm introducing. I think sometimes in the world that we live in, Brother Tommy, I think sometimes people think that if I witness to somebody and, and, and they don't accept Jesus as their Savior, they feel like a failure. And I think because of that, so many times in our walk, Sammy, so many times we think because I witness and I talk to, man, they didn't accept that I failed, but that's just not the truth. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people in this room that can be witnesses of themselves that said it took a lot of somebody witnessing to me. Hey, there's some people in this room, I think, that, that when somebody told you about Jesus the first time, you probably came to him. But I believe that there are some people in this room, it took people telling you several times along the way. It took you several moments of somebody praying for you and somebody getting to you so whatever it takes to get that person there 
I'm talking about through introductions, through talking, through prayers. You know, in March, you, I know that we have a lot of people. Some of us, we have relatives in our lives. How many of us have got a child or a grandkid or somebody in our life that, man, I just want to do whatever it takes to get them to Jesus? You know what I'm saying? So you understand my goal, understand what I'm doing. But then secondly, the resources that this church has, I want to take those people that come to Christ and I want to grow them, Lawrence. I mean, you know, there's sometimes that, that, we, that we do things in a church that, that you'd say, man, I don't know why we're spending money on that. But I'm, 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 I'm going to say one today. Praise God for air conditioning, okay? Amen. Think about what I'm saying now. Thank God in heaven for air conditioning, okay? And y'all hear what I'm saying. So the church spends money on that. And I'm going to tell you why we spend money on that. Because if you came into this room and you were miserable, which some of you are already miserable anyway, <laughs> and there's not a whole lot I can do about that sometimes, but Jimmy, if they became even more miserable because somebody wouldn't turn on the air, okay? So understand where I'm going. I want to do whatever it takes to grow people in Christ. Sometimes that's building buildings. Sometimes that's making parking lots. Sometimes that's growing. We want to spend our resources in this church to do whatever it takes to help people grow in Christ. I believe that. I'm going to tell you something. I believe that, that, that when I got to this awesome church, that, that, that I looked around and I saw what was going on, and I saw a lot of people that are willing to do whatever it takes for Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you what, man, that's, that's the environment I want to be in. And so I want to take whatever money comes in, whatever that we have with a, with a group of born-again believers, and I want to take those people that have come to know Jesus Christ, and I want to help them grow in understanding. I hope, I hope today, listen, y'all, I hope today, y'all hang in here with me, I hope this church can develop some Sammy Clarks along the way. Now listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying that as a compliment because I hope we as a church can develop some, some, some Christians in this church that want to grow in the Word of God, in God's knowledge. I mean, hey, listen, wouldn't that be great to say when you got older one day that I was part of a church that they wanted to see me grow? They wanted to see me have more knowledge. They wanted to see me have more faith. They wanted to see me have a better walk. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That's what this church should, and I believe with all my heart, is about. I believe it. Listen, listen, I'm going to tell you. I'll be honest. First, I'll tell you, Wanda, if it wasn't about that, I wouldn't be here. Because, surely, I'm going to go somewhere where they're about that. But it's this last one. It's this last one that I have a tough time with in the ministry. <laughs> it is, Dennis. It's, 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 it's the toughest one of all of them. Is people getting committed. To Jesus Christ. I'm talking about getting committed. And what I mean by that is, God, I'm all in. I'm all in. Our, 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 our uh, Sunday school lesson was, was so great, I almost wanted to preach it. Obey God and let him worry about the consequences. Leave the consequences up to God. It was, it was so good, I'd, I'd love to even preach that, but I'm not going to get sidetracked. But when I think about this, what the church needs more than anything else is commitment from its members. How many of you in this, this, this church have ever had a job where you had to work at during the week? <laughs> Raise your hand a little higher. Hey, were you ever thankful for your job? I was. I, hey, listen, y'all, I've, I've worked at a job for, I've worked at the same job for 34 years. Somebody... Listen, I don't own the company. Somebody has paid me to be there. They, that's pretty cool for 34 years that they, every week, give Joey a paycheck to go be part of that company forever. forever. And, I, and I hope, Sammy, I'm going to use your word today. I hope along the way that I wasn't a sorry employee. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Tim, Timmy, do you have some sorry employees? Timmy, you ever have some? I've got some employees that work for us that there's no better way to describe them than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all laugh now. <laughs> Bet you won't laugh in just a second. <laughs> because I got some church members I wouldn't define any less than that either. Oh, Lord help us. Nobody's laughing now. Man, if I could just be sorry today. 
I can't even believe Sammy said that to me this morning. Man, I could just be sorry today. Maybe I just won't get up. Maybe I just won't go. Maybe I just won't participate. I, I, want, I, want, I want to tell you, just so you know, for those of you that work for a living in your Christianity, if you compare the two, you, it's sorry at work. Can everybody agree with that? Y'all shake your head. Well, it's sorry at church, too. I know nobody wants to hear that, Sammy, but it's the truth. It is the truth. So my goal, my crazy goal that I have, this, this crazy minister that is at Concord Baptist Church at this moment in time, the crazy goal that I have, this, he's got, his, his eyes are starting to look crazy. I got that crazy minister look. Is I, what I want in this church, what I want more than anything, is to not have any sorry Christians in here. Is that, is that a bad go, you think, Jimmy? I mean, I, I don't want any sorry Christians in here. Now, you're saying Joey doesn't want to come to church. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I want those Christians to get committed. Committed. I'm talking about get committed. This is a great story in the Bible to me. It's a great story because it is a moment in time when Thomas had to get committed. Up to this point was, we heard him last week, and y'all heard me say it last Sunday. Those of you were here, and we were on that verse, and he was one of those groups. Unless this happens, unless X, Y, and Z, unless this happens, I will not believe. I'm not going to believe. I'm going to have to see some handprints. I'm going to have to have some evidence, and I'm going to tell you something, folks. There are some people sitting in this room that are no different than Thomas. You've got to have some evidence you got to see some things. God's got to do some miraculous things in your life. God, i got to have proof. I want proof. Or I'm just not going to get committed. Okay? I will remain sorry as long as I choose. Now, now I'm not going to be a sorry employee at work. I'm not going to be a sorry uh, husband at home. I'm not going to be a sorry dad. But for some odd reason, we think that it's okay to be a sorry Christian. <laughs> a non hey, Y'all laugh about it. You laugh about it, but there's more truth here than you know. We know, like Sam said, my wife's in here. Where is she? I love her. Oh, Lynn, I hate, hate it when Joey breaks me up. Lynn has been teaching for 17 years. She stayed at home for a long time. Lynn, I'm not going to talk about teachers, but Lynn won't use any vacation days. I, I still say that if, if, I, if, if I die during the week, I told Max and them, please make my funeral on the weekend so Lynn, because she won't have to take off work. <laughs> Poppy, don't laugh. Shh. Don't laugh, because she's not going to take off work. And I'm not mad at her for that, because Lynn is committed to what she does, okay? Y'all think it's funny when, when somebody's doing it right, but my wife, every day that they give her as vacation, you know, there's teachers, they give them so many days, she still has all of them. You know what I'm saying? She didn't take them. And you know what? I'm not saying that to make fun of her. I'm very proud of her for that. Because she's committed to what she's doing. And I think that's a good thing. And because she's committed to what she's doing, she's helping those that she's getting paid to do that for. It's awesome, isn't it? You know, it is. It's awesome that you can be committed. But, but why is it that we feel the need to be committed at work? Why is it that there's a need we feel we need to be committed in our marriages? Why is there a feel that we need to be committed sometimes, whether it's buying season tickets for a football thing or be committed as a fan, we can do that too. But we don't understand why we don't need to be committed in this. Why, do we, why, why is it okay not to be committed to God? Why is it okay? And I want to tell you all something, just so you know, it's not okay. It's not. There's nothing that the Bible teaches that it's okay to not be committed to Jesus Christ. Really, there's a lot of bad things that are taught for people who are not committed. There's a lot of evidence of it, but it's the sad thing is, is that the devil, listen to me, and this is what bothers me in the church today, is the devil has reasoned in our hearts and our minds and our souls and our circumstances that create a mentality that says, it's okay with me not being committed. It's okay. You, you know what? You do need to take off sometime. You do need to get away. You know what? You know, Brother Joey's wrong. You don't have to be at church every Sunday. <laughs> Listen, first of all, I'm not teaching my commands. 
who showed up for my Sunday school class, they'd get this one too, wouldn't they? This isn't something I made up. It's something Sammy made up. It's something that comes from the Almighty. I'm just the messenger. So here we are, Christians, Randy, as Christians, we're trying to go down an every now and then path. That's where Thomas was at. He wasn't sure how he was going to go down his path. And all of a sudden, he gets the evidence, and God says, he shows him his hands, he sees his side, he sees all these things, and then Thomas says, my Lord, my God. I, I want, I want y'all to know this. I want you to know this from the bottom of my heart. I get on Thomas, a lot of people get on Thomas, they call him, he's he got a poor nickname. But I want you to know this, and you can go do some research on Thomas. Thomas would die for Jesus Christ. He would, he would, they would some say that he, he suffered a death that was worse than some of the other disciples. But I'm going to tell you something about Thomas. He got committed. He got committed. He made a devotion. And today, what I want to talk about, and you know, you say, Joe, you're really just getting started? I am. I really am just getting started. I want to talk about what is it going to take for you to get committed. I want to talk about several stories in the Bible, and I don't want to miss these. Several men, if you will, that it, what it took to get them committed. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep this as brief as I can, but I want you to think about what I'm saying. For Peter, who I'm a big fan of also, it took a fish fry. Y'all look at me. Y'all don't think I'm crazy. Guy, I know you like fish fry. <laughs> How many of you have been at a fish fry? You you're kind of around hanging out with your buddies, you start talking about God. It took a fish fry. But let me tell you something. It was a special fish fry. Because, see, Jesus was at the fish fry. <laughs> so, so, so all of a sudden now, you're kind of at the fish fry. Maybe we need to focus on Jesus. We need to focus on what's going on. But I'm going to tell you something. The conversation at the fish fry didn't leave Peter feeling too good. You know, this is, this is where preachers at are a lot of times is that I have heard more times than not in my life, Poppy, I have heard more times people walking out that front door that said, Joey, you stepped on my toes today. I've heard that more times than I cared. I want to show y'all something. Y'all ready for this? Everybody flip to the front of your Bible if you got it with you. Hope it could be the King James. The authorized King James Version. Mine was printed by the Holloman Company out of Nashville, Tennessee. But I challenge you, and you can take the next couple days if you want to. You don't have to do it today, but you challenge you, but it's not in mine. But I challenge you to look for something there this week. Look where Joey Debman wrote it. <laughs> Lynn, you, you'll be honest with them. Did I write this book? Absolutely not. <laughs> Say a little louder where they can all hear you. What, did I write this book? Absolutely not. Joey Deadman had nothing to do with writing or translating this Bible. Do y'all understand that? Can y'all give me a big amen to that? Amen. amen. Thank God that I didn't. I'm going to tell y'all something. I can say this for all that it is worth, deep, for my entire life of preaching, I didn't step on anybody's toes. I have never stepped on a toe in God's house. That has not ever happened. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of times God has pounded on your hearts and you won't take it out on the preacher. <laughs> Come on now. Tell them, Shirley. God is pounding on your hearts. The Holy Spirit is trying to slap you in the face. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it out on the preacher. Because he must know that I fish, I drink, I cuss. He knows all those things. He spends enough time with me. He sees how much I lay out. He sees how much I don't do. And you know what? Joey has took notes on me, and he has put a message together so that he can come in there and run me down. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That is not my goal. That has never been my goal. My goal is to tell you what that book says. I want to do it from the bottom of my heart. With the, it's, it's absolute truth that it is. But when Peter came to Jesus and Jesus got Peter committed, you know what he did? He got on his heart, Lawrence. He got down there where he was at at a fish fry. And I'm going to tell you something. 
I'm going to tell you something, guy. When Peter left that fish fry, he wasn't feeling very good about himself. He wasn't feeling very good because constantly the Almighty told me, I'm going to tell you something, if he sat there with you, you'd feel the same way. Peter, do you love me? Every time. And I'm going to tell you all you ignorant folks that are sitting out there today saying, God knows how I feel. You listen to what you just said. That's exactly right. God does know how you feel. You can make all the excuses that you want. You can say whatever you want about your situation. You do whatever you want to. I don't care. It's not on me. That's on you. It's on you. You are the one that has to get committed to Christ. Listen, y'all, y'all ready for this? I'm already committed. That's why I'm up here preaching. My brother said something to me last year about COVID. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all get mad at me. I know everybody gets tired of listening to it. They were talking about churches coming and going when they stop Christ. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all ready for this? Brother Curtis, I never stopped preaching one time. I didn't quit doing what I was doing. Brother Sammy, did we stop? Did we take a break? Did we go home because we were scared? Hey, you know what? What could happen to us? What if I caught it and died? You know what? You know why I don't care? Because I'm committed to something else. I don't care. I'm committed to the Almighty. Now, my commitment has nothing to do with Deke's commitment. It doesn't, Deke, does it? I'm going to tell you something. I've got an awesome wife. My children are sitting back there. My sons will work, and they'll help and do. They'll teach them. They'll do their thing. But my commitment to Jesus Christ has nothing to do with their commitment. There are some of you in your room that, that you've got these prize-honored grandparents <laughs> that are some awesome. I'm going to, you know, Brenda, I'm going to use you and Gary right now. These two awesome people that, that serve God, they walk with God. And there's probably some, some of your grand, my, 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 my grandfather, he was a deacon. He served that church. I'm going to tell you something. Gary and Brenda's commitment to Jesus Christ ain't got nothing to do with his kids. It ain't got nothing to do with his grandkids. And I'm going to tell you something. They may think he's a novelty item, and they may think that, that that's going to get them in the right place with God, but it ain't. What that did is got Gary and Brenda in the right place with God. Y'all listen to what I'm saying now. God needed Peter to get committed so he could accomplish the task. Sometimes it takes, sometimes it takes God getting on us. For Paul, <laughs> for Paul, it took getting blinded. Y'all think about that. Paul was set out down the wrong path. He's going down the wrong direction. He's going down doing the wrong things. God, Jesus Christ, struck him with blindness. Couldn't even figure, let him figure out where he was going. I'm going to tell you something. It took, it took a hard conversation for Peter. It took getting blinded for Paul. And I'm going to tell you something. When Paul recognized what was going on around him and he saw that it was Jesus, you know what? He had a change in direction, didn't he? So Paul got, Peter had a hard conversation. Paul got blinded. I'm going to get through these. Took John losing something. Do you know that? The disciple John, I love him. I think there's nobody that loved him more. But it took him losing something to change his commitment to Jesus Christ. You know what he lost? Sure, y'all know what John lost? He lost Jesus. He did. He lost his best friend. I'm going to tell you something, y'all. Don't think that God's not above it. I'm not saying that God takes people out of our lives. I'm not saying, but I do believe God's got a plan. And there's some times in our lives when God has had to take people out of our lives. Out of our lives. So that we could see. The Bible says that when John entered that tomb on that Easter Sunday morning, y'all heard me say it last Sunday, he looked in there, he saw his friend was gone, but he believed in something else. He got committed really fast. He thought about everything that Jesus had been talking about. He thought of everything that Jesus had been telling. He thought of everything, and he started putting it all together. And the Bible says, that Lawrence, that when he looked into that tomb and he saw that that body was gone, the Bible says that he believed. He got committed on the spot. I'm going to tell you what God would show John things that, that he didn't show him. Think about this. Everything, listen to this, everything that we're dependent on what's going on in the future is written about in a book called Revelations. 
God showed that to John. He showed it to somebody that got committed. You ever wonder, you ever wonder sometimes there are people in this room that are sitting here like, I don't understand why God doesn't use me. <laughs> I say it in a whiny voice for a reason. I don't understand why God, because I'm going to tell you, let me tell you that why. Let me tell you why I say that. Y'all are going to laugh at me. Because if you're getting used by God, we're asking a different question. God, I don't know how much more I can do. <laughs> the people that are sitting there saying, I don't understand why God can't use me. Because you're not committed. That's the obvious, the goodness truth. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. God can use things to get you committed to him. I just pray that he does it. So he used John. He used the loss in his life. For Thomas, it took some proof. And I, I still think that. Man, Jesus, if you don't do this, how many of y'all ever made a deal with God? I'm going to raise my hand. I, I, I'll be honest with y'all, I did. When I was a teenager, I wanted God to do some things in my life. God, if you'll do this, that's what making a deal is. God, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> I'm, I'm honest, Jimmy. I'm honest. There's some times, and, and, and there's times when I said, God, if you would have, well, that's all Thomas did. God, I'll do what you're asking me to do, but you're going you're gonna to have to show me something. You're going to have to have some. And, it's, and Beverly, if I can say it right, you're going to have to have some skin in the game, Jesus. And I'll be honest with you, it's going to be your skin that needs to be in the game. I'm going to need to see the nail prints. I'm going to need to see the thing in your side. I'm going to need some proof, God. Some of you today, you sit on that bench today. That's what you want. You want God to do something miraculous. You want God, And when God makes something miraculous happen, well, God, I may, maybe I'll go down that bridge. Until then, God, I'm just going to be a sorry Christian. Because that's what it is by definition. I'm just going to halfway do this whenever I feel like it. And no matter what Preacher Joey says, I, me and the devil are going to be just okay with me living the way that I am. Y'all listen to what I said. I'm very, I'm very careful about saying that. I didn't tell you Jesus was going to be okay with it. I said you and the devil were going to be okay with it. Because Jesus ain't happy with none of it. He's very frustrated with it. He's very frustrated with how we can call him our Lord, how we can call him our Savior, how we can call him our Master. And this day doesn't mean any more to us than it does. It's like a joke. It's, Sunday is like a joke to Christians. Just like I said, my wife wouldn't miss work for nothing. Some of us would miss this day, don't matter what came up. I got tickets to a game. Man, it's nice enough to go fishing. It's nice enough to go play golf. It's nice enough to whatever. I don't feel right. My stomach hurts. My head don't feel dizzy. Whatever the reason, whatever falls in my head, I, you know what? I'm not going to be here, God, because I want any excuse not to have to go into that miserable building and listen to your miserable word that is just getting on my, listen to this, this last part, Lawrence, you're going to love it, that's just getting on my miserable heart. just stepping on my miserable heart. I'm tired of it, God. And I don't want to come in here. You know what? Well, don't be tired of it. Because for some of you, it's the last one. And I want y'all to know something. Everybody I listed knew God in some kind of way. Peter knew Jesus Christ. John knew Jesus Christ. You say, Paul was going to, but you know what? Paul did, but he knew who he was. He was just on the other side of it. Thomas knew Jesus Christ, and even the last guy that I'm going to mention knew Jesus. Who's the last guy? Nine, his name is Legion. He's in Mark 5. You say, Joe, how in the world? Do you, know what, when, do you know when Jesus came out to Legion? Do you know what he said, Toby? When, when, when Legion saw him coming, he said, Thou son of God, have mercy on me. He, had, he knew who he was. And I saved Legion for last because I think it's probably what needs to go on in the church more than anything else. Jesus just needs to get the bad stuff out. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. Sometimes in their, your lives, I'm going to tell you something, Jesus just needs to get the bad stuff out, the stuff that don't matter. Those demons that are crying out for other things, that are telling me that it's okay and it's okay not to worship God. It's okay not to have a close wall. It's okay not to read my Bible. It's okay not to pray. It's okay not to have a close wall. It's okay to do whatever I want. All the, it's okay. I'm going to tell you something. That's the devil talking. That is not the Almighty. 
And I'm going to tell you something, Legion was able to focus on Jesus and see even when he coming. Hey, you know what? He didn't have a relationship. He didn't have a commitment. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. When Jesus got the bad stuff out, Sammy, you know what? When Jesus got the bad stuff out, Legion got committed. I'm going to tell you something. I pray from the bottom of my heart for some of y'all that God would just get the bad stuff out. Get the lies out of your life. Get, let the almighty liar get out because that's what you're listening to. You're not going to listen to God's messenger. You're not going to listen to God's message, but you'll listen to the devil at any occasion. <laughs> I, hear, I have hunter friends of my hunters that will tell me, they'll say, you know, Joe, when I'm in a tree, I'm at one with God. I go sit in a tree on Sunday, and, and me and God are at peace. You don't think that's right? I said, fellas, I won't tell you, I'm going to tell you what the book says is right. And the book doesn't tell us that that's right. <laughs> the book says, forsake you not the assembling of yourself. That's what the book says. The lies is the bad stuff. And I'm going to tell you something, Shirley. If I had a prayer for this church and the sorry Christians, because that's what they are by definition, isn't it? Sorry employees. If a guy's running around with his wife, is he a sorry husband? Yeah. Listen to me. Dennis, if a guy is running around with his wife, is he a sorry husband? Can I get an amen on that? If a guy, if a, hey, listen. If a woman is running around on her husband, is she a sorry wife? If a Christian is running around on his God, is he a sorry Christian? Amen, he is. If he is running around, if he is listening to the devil, if he is taking up with his kind, I'm going to tell you something, by definition, by definition, he is a sorry Christian. And he is nothing more than that. And he is, I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, he's worse than the husband cheating. He's worse than the wife cheating. He's worse than the guy laying out of work. Because he knows, or she knows the Almighty. They know him. They know who he is. And they're cheating on him anyway. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I do have a goal. I have a goal for Christians to get committed. And I wonder sometimes in this building, <laughs> I wonder, Timmy, I wonder, Randy, I always wonder what happens when we all get committed. What happens when God gets us to a place that, that the devil, we can't hear him anymore? We're not paying attention to what he says. We're not scared of his scare tactics. We're not fearful of his lies. Where our focus is on the Almighty, and you know what? And no matter what happens, I got a love for Jesus. God, you just take me and you go. You know what? God makes missionaries out of those people. God does wonderful things. You know what? But you say, oh, man, Joe, God, that guy got committed. I saw so-and-so. He got committed to Christ, and he's over in Uganda. I don't want to do that. I don't want to sign up for that. Listen to me. I'm going to make a promise to you. Listen to this. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> You're going to laugh, but you might not. God's not going to send you to you, God. You me to tell you why? Sorry, Christians, talking to you. God's not going to send you to you, God. You know why? Because you can't even come to church most of the time. <laughs> Think about it. If you can't commit him to come worship in his house, sing his praise, learn his word, how in the world, Sammy, is he going to bend your heart to send you to another country to spread his gospel? He's not. You know why? He's just our Christian. That's just the honest and goodness truth of it. Everybody, some, you know what? There are Christians that are laughing at me. There are some people that are mad at me today. But you know, you put yourself in your own category because you know. Hey, listen, y'all don't have to categorize me. Listen to this. This is cool. I get to categorize me. I know what's going on in my heart between me and the Almighty. I can sit here and judge Sammy for all he's worth, but it's really irrelevant because Sammy knows what's going on in his heart in between the Almighty. I can say whatever I want to about my wife, but Lynn knows what's going on in her heart in between the Almighty. Listen, so if that's true for all of us, it's true for every one of us. God, what does it take not to get Sammy... There's, there's wives sitting there saying, man, I wish I could get my husband committed. Don't focus on your husband right now. Focus on you. There's husbands sitting there saying, what can I do to get my kids committed? Don't focus on your kids. Focus on you. There are people that are sitting in this room where it's always, my mom used to, I used to joke about this. She'd hear a good message and say, 
I mean, I wish you'd heard that message. It was for you. I'd always say, Mom, it wasn't for me because you're the one that heard it. <laughs> Y'all laugh. It's true. It's funny. But you're the one that heard it. The message was for you. So you can go home and say, man, Preacher Joey preached something today. It was for so-and-so. It wasn't. It was for you because you were here. Okay? And if you're a sorry Christian you were here, then you ought to do something about it because, like I've said this before, <laughs> I am, and I'll take credit for this, Matthew, being the most ignorant person in this room. And if I can see how some of you live and watch it, and just a little that I know, what do you think the Almighty sees? He knows. And what's even better than that is you know. He knows it. And if you were just honest with yourself, you know it too. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for all the many wonderful things you've done for us. God, thank you for the time to come to this church once again. Lord, I don't know what it takes. God, maybe it takes a, somebody slapping somebody in the face. Maybe it takes a talk-down me message. God, maybe it takes somebody in this room losing something. I, I don't know because that's what happened. God, maybe it takes... Somebody being blinded. I don't know because, God, you've done that. God, maybe it takes ultimate proof for each one of them that's different. Lord, but I, I think for a lot of them it just takes getting the bad stuff out. I'm being honest with you, just getting the bad stuff out of life. Lord, I pray that that, that is a case for so many. But, Lord, each person in this room knows what it takes for them. And, God, I pray this morning to God that we'd have some men and women that would be focused. I'm, I'm going to ask a question today. I'm going to ask a question today and I'm on everybody's head bowed and everybody's eyes closed I know do some things different and I'm all about doing things different but maybe you're here today and you say Joey I don't even know Jesus as my Savior now Joey what I do know is I've heard of Jesus I've talked about Jesus I've done some things but I will be honest with you there's no evidence of him in my life as ever been master where I've made a, a bold commitment to accept him as my Savior would you raise your hand this morning and be honest between you and the Almighty? Better than that, maybe you do know him. Maybe you're here today and, and uh, I need to take some steps. I'm going to go ahead and open this altar up. I mean, we're not even started singing yet. We don't have to sing. But God, when I look at my life, Here's, here's my favorite part. God, when I look at my life, I'm sorry you have to see what you see. Lord, I pray that you'd get me committed today as a Christian. Lord, I pray this morning to God, Lord, that, that there are Christians here today, there are people here today that, Lord, that need to make a moving step. It's obvious, dear Jesus, dear God. It's obvious in how we walk and how we live. Lord, I pray for this congregation. Lord, and then two, lastly, if there's somebody here that, that says, hey, you know what, I want to be part of this church. I want to be part of what God's doing here. I want to invite them to come this morning. Dear God, Lord, and our church is open up for membership, and, and, and Lord, just to invite them to come in and be part of this. Lord, as we build and we try to grow to get other people to Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you for all the things that you're doing for us, and it's in your almighty sweet name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. Let's all stand. What are we going to say? I want to take this time and thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. My name is Joey Dibman. I'm with Concord Missionary Baptist Church. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ and have never asked him to come into your heart, I'd like to take a few moments to help you do just that. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, this is open to every one of us that requests because Romans 10, 13 goes on to say even deeper, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you would like to pray with me, let's bow our heads and pray to our Lord and Savior and ask him if you're seeking him to come into your heart today. Lord, I just want to take the opportunity that if there's someone out there today and dear God, Lord, they're seeking you. Dear God, Lord, and maybe they're at a place in their life where they can't see. But today, through the Holy Spirit, 
which has pricked their heart through your word, not the words that I preach, but through the holy word of an awesome father. God, I pray today, dear God, Lord, that they would be enlightened. And God, I, I'd ask them today to pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a believer. Dear God, Lord, I want to believe in the fact that I know that you walked on this earth. Lord, I want to know that you died for my sins. God, I want to believe in the fact that on the third day you resurrected from a tomb and you sit on the right hand of God. And today, Lord, I want to ask you to come into my heart. Lord, if there's one out there praying with us today, dear God, Lord, that's seeking you, Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer with me today, dear God, Lord, and invite Jesus Christ into their heart to forgive their sins. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. God, we thank you for what you're doing for us. I just pray that you'd be with us through this moment in time. And dear God, Lord, and show us the things that you'd have us to see. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. You know, if you've done that today, if you've taken the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, you know, he died on a cross close to 2,000 years ago and he walked on the earth. The Bible teaches us that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that he has risen from the grave shall be saved. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, you know, I want to invite you to, you know what, into your new relationship with your Father. And I want to, to maybe help you, maybe through watching the videos as you learn and you grow, but maybe try to find a, a church that's close to you, a church home where you can go with other believers and walk with them and learn to grow with them. I invite you today also that maybe if today you've asked Christ to come into your heart, that, that you know what, maybe you would let us know. And drop us a postcard to say, you know, hey, I listen to these videos on YouTube. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like for y'all to know that on this date, on so-and-so, that I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. We'd invite you, and, and if you look at the address that's on the screen today, and, and maybe send a postcard. And then, you know what, if you don't want to write it down, maybe through email. There will be a, an email address that you can address to our church at Concord Missionary Baptist Church. You could just email us and let us know what's going on in your life. But even better than that out there today, maybe you are a, a Christian today and maybe you're not here in Temple, Georgia with us, but you're in your walk with Jesus today and you're, you're having some valleys that you're having to go through. And, and maybe you need some, to seek some prayer requests and some other shoulders to lean on. I invite you to also to email us or drop us a card. We meet on Wednesday nights to pray. We take these things before the Father. We take these things very seriously and we come together as a group as we pray to our Father. So. I'd invite you to, to send those prayer requests to us, and I promise you that we'll take them and put them on the altar and bring them before the Lord. Once again, I want to thank so much for you taking your time to come spend with us and worship with us, you know, through song, through word, but more, more than anything else, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you and your family.